In this tutorial, I'll answer the questions around bottom navigation using Stacked. A question I get a lot in the comments is how to use a bottom navigation bar with a Stacked architecture. I'll start off by saying that if you know how to use the bottom nav bar, it works basically the same. On tap, we'll update a value that tracks the selected index. Then we'll rebuild the UI and get the widget for that selected index. And then we'll show that widget in the body of the scaffold. That's how we do it with stack as well. But the extra things that I've been asked for is things like how do you make sure that the on model ready call is not fired every time you swap with a view? How do you make sure that your view keeps the state that it was in previously? And how do you make sure that your view model maintains its state when you swap between? the indexes. To follow along, the best thing to do will be to download the starting project on foldstacks.com. There is two views that I've created which we'll use as the views when swapping between our tabs on our bottom nav bar. You can download the code by going to foldstacks.com and opening the written tutorial and then clicking on the download code button under the thumbnail header. Once you've downloaded the code and opened it up in Visual Studio Code, go to your pubspec.yaml and then you can download all the packages before we start. I'll just change my setup because I like the emulator being on the right side of the screen. Once you have the code open, then you can open up the home view file where we will be adding our bottom navigation bar. Just for reference, you can press Ctrl P in Visual Studio Code and you can type in the file that you want to jump to. We'll start off by adding the bottom navigation bar to the scaffold. We will create a new instance of the bottom navigation bar and we'll give it a type fixed. The type fixed keeps the navigation bar fixed, whereas the default style is when you tap on a selected one, the icon grows bigger and the others go a bit smaller. I want to keep it fixed in this case. Then we'll set the background color to gray of shade 800. And for the current index, we will get the current index from the model. We still have to add that so it'll show an error squiggle for now. And then for the on tap function, we will set that to the model.setIndex function. Then for the items, we'll supply a bottom navigation bar item. We will set the title equal to posts. And for the icon of that navigation bar, we'll supply an icon widget with the icon.artTrack icon. Then we can duplicate that code and change our title to todos. And the icon data we can change to list. There's still two errors in this code, which is the current index and the set index function. To fix that, you can go to the home view model and you can change it from a base view model to an index tracking view model. Stacked index is a very basic view model that has an integer that tracks a current index and a function to set that index. There's also some additional things which I'll show you in this tutorial. When the code finally starts up and runs, you'll see the bottom nav bar with a gray background and a posts and a to-dos item. That's the basic setup, so let's move on to showing the view that we want. For the body of the scaffold, we will change that to a function called get view for index. We'll pass in the current index from the model and then below the build function, we will create a new function that returns a widget called get view for index. This will take in an integer called index and we will create a switch case and switch on that index. For the case of zero, we will return a posts view. For the case of one, we will return the to do view. And for our default case, we will return the posts view as well, since that is the first view in the bottom nav bar. The posts view fetches posts from the JSON placeholder API and the to do's view is a very simple to do list. So you'll see when you run the code now, the post view is fetched and there's always a little loading indicator at the top and the to do's stays empty. Now this was the first major comment that I received for a few weeks, which is the initialization logic or the on model ready logic fires every single time that we swap between views. So once you've fetched data, you don't expect it to be refetched just because you swapped your, your tabs on your bottom nav bar. You can see that in the debug console because we print out fetch posts in the future to run function in the post view model. 
and you see it being printed out every time that we swap between the two tabs. So that'll be the first thing that we'll tackle, which is to not run the initialization logic every time we swap back to a view. The first thing we want to do is set dispose view model to false. That is because we will be reusing the same view model so that we maintain the state of that view model. The second thing is to register it with our get it locator. If you are using injectable, you can simply add the annotation at singleton at the top of the post view model and then run flutter pub run build runner build and pass in the delete conflicting outputs flag as well. If you are not using injectable, you can simply call locator.register singleton, give it a type of posts view model and pass in a constructed posts view model. Now, because we made this view model a singleton, which you don't have to do through get it, you can also do it by implementing the singleton pattern for that view model. But because we are using get it for the view model builder, we now have to get the post view model from the locator instead of constructing it ourselves. This will give us back the same post view model every time that the view model builder is called. That means whatever state it had before we change from it will maintain throughout the lifecycle of this app. The last thing to do is call initialize special view model once and set that to true. This will tell the view model builder that we only want to initialize the special view model once. When the code finally starts up and runs, you will see that when you now swap between these tabs that it won't print out the fetch anymore because it only runs that functionality once and maintains all the data that was fetched in the previous or first call of your future view model. The next thing to look at is when you swap away the state of the view, the UI itself is not being maintained. So if you scroll to the bottom, swap to to do's and come back, the list will be back at the top. To fix this, we will supply a page storage key to the list view. You can give the key any unique value. We'll just put in storage dash key and that will fix up that problem for us. It's quite a simple fix, but not a lot of people know about the page storage key. Now that our state is maintained for the UI, the last thing I want to fix in terms of the UI is the fact that there is no transition between the two page views that you are swapping between. To fix that, we will use the animations package provided by the Flutter dev team. So open up your pubspec.yaml file and we'll add the animations package. We'll add version 1.1.1. That's the current version and it might be higher by the time you watch this video. They provide a set of widgets that help you with very cool animations and it follows the material motion guidelines. So the point where we swap our body out, we will wrap that with a widget and we will use the page transition switcher. Then we will supply the duration of this animation and we'll give it a duration of 300 milliseconds. Then we'll supply a transition builder. This is a function that takes in as a first child a widget, which is the child that's being transitioned. It takes in a second parameter that we'll call animation, which is of type animation type double as well as a third parameter which we call secondary animation which is also of type animation double. And for the transition we will create a new instance of shared axis transition. For the child that it requires we will pass in the widget child from the function and for the animation we'll pass in the animation and you can guess it for the secondary animation we will pass in our secondary animation as well. The one thing we have to supply is the transition type and we will use a shared axis transition type of horizontal. This means that the current page will fade out to the left and the new one will fade in from the right. When we run this code now, you will see that when we swap between these views, you have a little fade from the left to the right. From the right to the left, sorry about that. It always fades from the right to the left. That is also a problem in my opinion because if I'm going back to the post, I would expect it to fade from the left to the right. Luckily, they give us a reverse value and the indexed stack 
calculates that value for you so you can simply pass in the model dot reverse value which will then tell the view to navigate either back with the old transition or use a new transition which will be the opposite of the previous one and that covers basically everything that i do in production for our client bottom navigation bars we've been building this ourselves repeatedly so i moved it into the stacked view model as an indexed stacked view model which you guys can now use as well from the latest version 1.7.1 there is a post view which doesn't have anything of this in it yet and i left it like that because you can then practice making that a singleton instance as well so that you get the pattern down for any of the future projects that you might want to do that is it for this video please let me know about anything else that you are struggling with i read and reply to every single comment that i get and that's because i use these comments to gauge what videos you guys would like to see next thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one